SeatGeek. For all your ticketed events, from sporting to concert outings, SeatGeek has you covered. They even conveniently color-coded each ticket on their website from amazing to worse, so you can easily know which are the best deals. SeatGeek, the smart way to buy. Save $20 off your next ticket purchase with the promo. Hey, everybody. I'm your host, the Grande Gato, also known as the Big Cat. I'm going to put your paws up. If you're rocking with the Big Cat today, we're going to talk about Baker Mayfield. Says he wants a little R-E-S-P-C-T. <laughs> Tell me what it means to me. <laughs> Baker Mayfield felt like he'd been disrespected. We'll talk about what this means. Does he have a valid claim or is he on here whining and bitching? We'll talk about it. Let's get into it. And here we go. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Head over to Twitter. Follow me at KeepPound underscore TV for the latest update. Count on the path to content and real-time reactions to breaking news. If you have a question for me, at me at KeepPound underscore TV. Hashtag Ask the Big Cat. Last but not least, jump in that cash app, baby. Anything you donate will be greatly appreciated. Now, with that being said, Baker Mayfield hopped on You Never Know podcast, and he has some strong words for the Cleveland Browns organization as far as how they dealt with his situation and his time in Cleveland. Let's take a listen. Like I really, truly, honestly have no regrets of my time in Cleveland of what I tried to give to that place. Right. And – True Clevelanders and true Browns fans know, know that. And that's why I can walk away from the whole situation feeling like I, I did it. And now, do you, feel like, do you feel like the way the office has handled it has been disrespectful to you, given, what's, given where you came in and where they are now? And uh, I mean, yeah, the respect thing is like, it, it's all, it's all going to be like a personal opinion. Yeah, like, and I don't, I, no, I, I feel disrespected, 100%, mm -hmm. because I was told one thing and they completely did another. That's what I'm in the middle of right now. And you know what? Okay, I got, I got my taste of it because I've had four different head coaches in four years, a bunch of different coordinators. I've had, talk about the highs? They always come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they always come back. They always yeah. come back. But, like, I mean, I had great times my rookie year. Like, I didn't, I didn't start in the beginning. I came in and got to have fun the back half of the year. 2019 sucked. 2020 was great, made the playoffs. 2021 was miserable. It's like, yeah. I'm just looking for stabilization right now. And, like, I know what i need to do for me to be to be the best version of me right. and to be able to lead an organization and like i'm in a good place right now right to where like i have no clue where i'm going <laughs> oh baker mayfield said i gave it all my true clevelanders and cleveland browns fans can see that oh that's cute that's real hard film he also said he felt disrespect by the organization because they were told he told one thing and they did another now, stop right there. Now, I will validate those claims right there. He has every right to be upset with that. Because prior to Deshaun Watson, you know what I mean, beating that criminal charge, it was all, I'm all on Team Baker. The, the organization, from everything in the media standpoint, it was all Team Baker. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, which, you know, if I had to chime in on that situation, I feel like the Deshaun Watson situation, it's going to blow up in their face eventually. At some point, maybe not year one, maybe not year two, but it's going to blow back up in their face. But that that's disloyal. Um, so I, I will give him credit for being disgruntled there. You know what I mean? Baker Mayfield's been in the league since 2018, only three years removed from college. And um, the sky's still the limit, but in the same breath, there's a certain loyalty. When you're riding with somebody, when you're riding with that project, you got to see it through. And I kind of felt like with the Deshaun Watson situation, they jumped on there and got the new shiny toy that was available. So, to, to, to validate his claims on being told one thing and did another, I can see how that's frustrated. And I, and I wouldn't want to be a part of that either. So, yeah, I agree with you on that. Now, he also said throughout his years, I have had got, I have grown used to being disrespected. <laughs> he said, I've grown used to being disrespected in Cleveland. But they always come back to me. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. This man got Stockholm Syndrome. He's in love with his oppressor. Yeah, he said they always come back. Let me tell you something. He said, I have four different coordinators, head coaches, yada, yada, yada. Look, sir. Now, I can't validate that. That's called business, man. Look, you know, you can sit up here and whine about having X amount of coordinators and X amount of head coaches. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to deliver. All right. The reason why you have so many different coordinators and so many different coaches is because they're trying to find somebody to match your skill set. 
which hasn't fully developed just yet. You're still a, you're still a work in pro, uh, progress, if you ask me. But in that work in progress, you managed to not utilize a number one offensive line in the NFL. You failed to burn. Um, you failed to utilize a number one receiver in Odell Beckham, who probably would have been a wide receiver. Uh, uh, excuse me, Super Bowl MVP if he would have stayed healthy. You burned out Jarvis Landry, who was a mediocre receiver anyway, but he, he was a decent receiver. So let's not play the four coordinators, different head coaches. This one is on you as far as execution. You failed to execute, and people grew tired. I mean, you can't wait on a player to develop forever. You know what I mean? If that's your guy, that's your guy. You rock with him and you develop him. But if they see that, you know, the writing's on the wall, and maybe they seen the writing on the wall on you. But you do, you know, and to your credit, you do deserve at least, hey, man, we're going in a different direction conversation. And you should have that early. You shouldn't be waiting to the last second soon as the newest toy on the block, such as Deshaun Watson, pops up. I will give you that. The fact of the matter is, <clears throat> he has every right to be mad about being disrespected. But you have no right to be mad about having four different head, I mean, having two different head coaches, four different offensive coordinators. That's on you. Your skill set hasn't translated yet. You have been madly inconsistent. He talked about the highs and the lows of being in Cleveland. Talked about how he made it under Kevin Stefanski's first year, made it to the playoffs, and then turned around and going right back down, missing the playoff. He has had abundance of injuries, and he's a tough guy, man. I will give him that. He's a tough guy on the field. He's going to lay it out there, but at the end of the day, your inconsistency has led to your unemployment. <laughs> well, not unemployment, but to you seeking a new team. Um, at the end of the day, man, let, let's be honest. 2018 draft class. You, Lamar Jackson, and Josh Allen. You were taken above all these guys. All right? And in that same time span, Lamar Jackson has won an MVP Josh Allen has has made almost a hell of a push to, uh, to, to a Super Bowl run. I mean, and both of those guys are about to get paid really handsome here. You know what I mean? So you have to ask yourself, what's the difference? What's the variable? I mean, both you guys, all, all three of you guys came out in the same draft class. What's the difference? The difference is consistency. The, the, the difference is effectiveness. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the difference is, and listen, you can say what you want to say about Lamar Jackson being a running back. I don't necessarily care for the guy' uh, athletic skills, if you want to be honest. But he's been effective. I mean, you still got to go out there and stop it. You know what I mean? So you've just been too inconsistent for any organization to really want to buy in long term. There's a possibility you can write the ship. But right now, as of right now, your ship looks like it's sinking. You know what I mean? As far as your career-wise, you, you, might, you might turn out to be... A bust as far as the for, for, former number one overall pick here. With that being said, don't worry about a job. You're going to eventually get a job here. Every year, an organization, they take a chance on a person that necessarily doesn't fit the scheme, doesn't fit the mold, has off the field issues, blah, blah, blah. Every year, it's always at least one team, and somebody's going to take a chance at you. And if I had to be quite frank here, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mason, not Mason Rudolph, but Mitchell Trubisky, I don't anticipate him being a long-term answer, nor do I anticipate him finishing the season. There's always one person, one team that's going to, you know, so you'll have a shot, all right? Another reason why teams got, another reason why Cleveland got fed up with you, he probably wanted to move on from you was the antics, okay? Everybody knows you're willing to tolerate so much of somebody's antics when they're producing, all right? I'm a Carolina Panthers fan. So trust me, I know when somebody puts up a lot of antics, if you're winning, people forget about all that. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, you're going back and forth on Twitter rants with your ex-teammates and doing all the silly stuff you're doing on and off the field, man. People get tired of that. I mean, are you winning? How many rings have you brought? I mean, you start to question that, you know what I mean? So ultimately, you got the right to be mad when it comes to that whole Deshaun Watson situation. I feel you on that. As far as offensive coordinators and blah blah blah, you had talent. You got talent. You had the, you had that number one offensive line. You had Odell Beckham. You had Landry. You got Nick Chubb for God's sakes. You got a constant running threat. I mean that that opens up the passing lanes right there. Your inability to be effective in the passing game consistently has led to your decline when it comes to you know getting a starting quarterback job. So 
right now, you're just going to have to wait it out. You're going to have to see who pans out, you know what I mean, Who new, what new acquisition, what free agent acquisition pans out, what free agent acquisition doesn't pan out, what draft, what, what, what draft pick doesn't pan out. Maybe, maybe, hopefully by training camp, you might get an invite. We'll see. I don't know. You know what I mean? Be honest with you, I don't know why why Atlanta didn't take a chance on you. I, I think you may got a little bit more than Baker. May, I mean, a little bit more than uh, Marcus Mariota, if you want to be honest. But that's my opinion. And again, last but not least, you know, when you make comments like this in the same interview about going to somebody's job and wishing you can boot him, take a look at it. I would love to show up at somebody's cubicle and just boo the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah. And see and watch watch them crumble. Ten thousand. When you make comments like this, this doesn't help. Again, this shows immaturity. A lot of you guys got to understand, you athletes, when you get on these podcasts, you got to be very mindful. Everything can be clipped and cut a certain way. When you get on these podcasts, you're talking about you want to boo somebody at their cubicle. I have no sympathy for no millionaire. I have no sympathy for no millionaire, okay? You look, you get out there, you get paid a bunch of money. You're a top athlete. You're expected to perform. If you can't handle the pressure of throwing a football, <laughs> then go handle the pressure of trying to work an Amazon job and be a high-speed loader and all this other shit. <laughs> we get paid millions of dollars, you know what I mean? It, it, it's real pettiness, man, and it's a lot of pettiness to do with you, uh, and, and people that ain't messing with that, you know, especially if you're not producing. I, I'll put up with a lot of petty nigga shit if you're producing, but, uh, you know, you got to do better. No, nah, you didn't get a fair shake when it comes to Deshaun Watson. Ultimately, your time in Cleveland was a waste. Thank you guys for watching Keep Pounding TV. I got one quick question. Do. Scream, scream, scream. You. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. Fumble. Love the Carolina Panthers. We did it. We did it. We did it. Like I love the Carolina Panthers. Ah!